Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Theory Tuition series where I'm working with you step by step through each of the ABRSM theory grades. Once you've completed your music theory and practice workbook, past papers are an excellent revision resource. I've worked with you from all of the papers from 2014 right the way through to 2018 and now I'm really pleased to bring 2019 to you as well. I have lots of resources available to help you on my website. If you visit SharonBill.com, you'll find some free PDF information sheets. These are available to download in US Letter or A4, and they accompany each step of this series. You'll find a page with links to all of my YouTube video tutorials there as well. You can also access information about the books that I have available. I've written an exam technique guide, how to take your ABRSM music theory exam. It's full of tips and hints on how to best be prepared for your exam and also how to make the best use of your time come exam day. So if you visit SharonBill.com you'll find it all there. If you can give me a like that would be really super and please do subscribe to my channel and do share out the videos. And now we're going to continue with Grade 1 2019 Practice Paper A and we're going to start now with Question 6. If you turn with me to page 5 we can make a start on this. Now question six is asking us to add rests. So this is just testing your knowledge on the appropriate rests and how long they last. If you want a little bit of revision, you'll find these in your PDF document and it relates to the PDF document G and all the videos in the workbook relating to that topic as well there. So I do suggest that you have a go of this on your own. It's always better to learn by your mistakes. Have a go, see if you've got the right answers and then come back into the video and we can check them through together. So here we should have three beats per bar, three crotchet beats, three quarter notes. We have one, two beats, we're one beat missing and we need to place a rest to show silence of that value and this is a one beat rest, a crotchet rest. So in the next bar we have one beat here, we have one beat here and we have half a beat here. So we've only got two and a half, we should have three so we're half a beat missing and so that's the half a beat rest, a quaver or an eighth note rest, like a number seven with a little blob on the end. So now then, Next question, there should be four beats per bar. We've got a minimum or a half note here which is worth two. We've only got half a bar and so we should have two beats silence properly shown here. And that's the rest that just sits on the line. It's easily confused with the four beat rest which is also a, four, uh, a full bars rest which hangs from the fourth line. So just be careful you don't get those two confused there. And so and if you remember, it's okay to put that two beat rest so long as it doesn't go over the halfway point in a bar of four four. The same with beaming and grouping as well. We don't cross over the halfway part of a bar of four four. It's just too long a bar and you need to be able to see two clear halves. So what do we have here? A busier bar here. We have a one beat here. We've got one beat here, two quavers, two eighth notes make a beat, another beat here. Now we know, if now if maths isn't your strong point, I am not great at maths and so I always visualise sort of a, a diagram. We know that a whole beat divides into four semi-quavers, four quarters of a beat and we have three quarters here, so there's one quarter, two quarters, three quarters, we've got a quarter of a beat left and that will be our rest and so it's like the quaver or the eighth note but then we put another little arm on it there so that's a quarter of a beat rest and then I think I've just answered this question here we have a full bars rest so it just so happens this is a four beat rest but regardless of whether it's four beats per bar or whatever a full bar is just quickly shown by this rest just hanging down from the fourth line and I remember four beat rest hangs from the fourth line so that's a little clue to differentiate between those two rests so that's that done 
and now we can move on to question seven. So we've got a little bit of revision on the notes of the treble clef. If this is your instrument, you won't find this too too difficult if you're a flute player or a piano player or something like that. However, if this isn't your instrument, you might just need to think carefully. And if you remember the spaces, spell face, F-A-C-E, and the lines, every good boy deserves football, or you could say every green bus drives fast, whatever helps you to remember that easiest. And then of course we have middle C at the bottom of the treble clef. If you imagine you've sort of met in the middle and the middle C is at the bottom of the treble, top of the bass, and then we have the D next to it. So that is the D above middle C. However, if you were a little bit stuck, you could always count down and just think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can tell you're an octave away from the given note, or you can think one step up from middle C, or we know this is an E, every good, and so on. So one step down gives you the D. So just work out what system suits you best. Now then, they've given us a little reminder here, helpful in reminding us to watch out for the sharp signs. We have F sharps and C sharps. Two sharps is always F sharps and C sharps. And so here, this is note F because the spaces spell face. However, that's not completely correct yet because we need to apply the key signature. It's F sharp. So here, this is an E, every good boy deserves and so on. So that's a note E. So the spacey spell face, F-A, F-A-C, however that's not completely correct yet because remember we need to apply the key signature, it's C sharp, so don't throw away a couple of marks there just by forgetting your key signature. So here are the lines, every good boy, every good, and every good boy deserves, however, look, We've actually given you that one. So we get that one for free, really. Let's move on to the next part of this question. So we're asked how many quavers or eighth notes is the last note of the melody worth? Now then, let's just diagram this out. You might be able to do it quickly in your head, but let's just check this out. The dotted minimum, a dotted half note, divides the minimum divides into two crotchets, two quarter notes, and the dot gives us half as long again, so we've got another one. And if we divide those again into quavers, that divides into two, that divides into two, that divides into two. So altogether, that's six. You could, of course, just look at one crotchet beat divides into two quavers, and then times it by three. However, either way you get it, the answer is six. Now we get a little bit of a test on um, performance directions, and there's going to be quite a lot of these as you progress through the grade, so I do suggest you have a good old revise of these. And in the back of your PDF document, if you just look online, I'll give you some revision tips on how to best sort of get those into your head and then I do give you a little test as well to test yourself. These are multiple choice and I'm not sure if this makes it easier or if it just slightly complicates things. You do sometimes get a bit of a red herring thrown in. So this is a crescendo. You can see the volume opening out. It's gradually getting louder, not quicker, it's not tempo, it's volume. Cantabile in a singing style, can't. Cantata is the singing root word there. So here we go. Now, lento is a, a tempo, a speed direction, and it means slowly, similar to largo. And then here, now watch out you don't get thrown off course here. That is a tie, but tie does not mean detach. That's really sneaky. Don't let that throw you. You know that a tie means that you hold the notes together, you add the note values together. So just be careful you don't skim the questions and get thrown off course there. That's quite uh, sneaky of ABRSM, but I guess that's the point. Just, just make you read the questions carefully. Fine means end after you've done a repeat. If you think finish, you can see the root word quite easily there. So a little bit of revision, test yourself 
and um, you'll soon get to grips with those performance terms. So I do hope that's helpful to you. I hope I'm helping you with your studies. I hope that you're enjoying your studies. I'm certainly enjoying working with you. If you can give me a like, that would be really super. And please do subscribe to my channel to keep updated. Please do share the videos. And also do browse around SharonBill.com and make use of all of the resource and information to help you there. Thanks for watching. Bye.